Hey, good morning. It's Jim here and we are along the beautiful American River and we are looking at the ride One Up City. I just purchased this bike from Ride One Up, which is kind of a newer company. And I got the city model uh, with the upgraded fenders and the upgraded display. So that it brings the cost to $9.99. $9.99 is a base model in the US right now. Uh, $10.99 with the city with the with the fenders in the rack and then another uh, $79 for the upgraded display. So I'm impressed with it so far. I'm going to show you the little unboxing here in a second and then we're going to just I'm going to go through the uh, features of this and uh, give you a feel for it. Thank you. That's my lovely assistant Milo, my son. Maybe I shouldn't say lovely assistant for a boy. So, I wanted to show this because the box came in pretty, pretty rough shape from UPS. Though the amazing thing is I ordered this uh, bike on Thursday and on Thursday morning, Thursday afternoon, I got a message that it had shipped and I got the bike on Friday afternoon. So um, it's the man, the warehouse is also here in California where I'm located. So it was a really fast, I, I mean, but shipping out pretty much the same day ordering is, I, pretty, I got a good on you uh, ride one up for kind of having that idea and your, you know, philosophy. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna tip up the box just cause I wanna show you some of the damage that the box sustained. And, uh, and I might actually pull the camera off here off the tripod, um, but you can see here on the, Side the, and I'll have to pull it out and see if it actually got damaged, but it looks like the uh, brake caliper pretty much completely ripped through the box. And I will note that probably if it weren't for these uh, poly plastic uh, straps on here, this this box would have totally, uh, I mean, there, this kind of would have been a sort of a catastrophe really. Uh, because you can see there none of the staples all the staples were had pulled themselves out um, So that's not you know, that's not great uh, So here we go Let me show this, um, get this out of the way. Hopefully I wasn't groaning too much there um, Anyway Looks like there is one other thing. I'm gonna reach down in here um, in the box uh, I got some pedals Got the owner's manual. I assume this is the charger in here. It looks like the rack could be compromised. I've seen this before um, where there's been, it looks like it is um, right here on this. It looks like it maybe got some force came down on it. And I've seen this before where the, the tail end of the rack is actually broken and it looks like it, it, it is split right there. So I'm gonna have to contact uh, ride one up about that. I'm going to do a quick assembly of the bike and uh, I'll speed it up in the video. Um, so yeah, get an idea of how it goes. All right, well, that was pretty fast. Um, pretty easy assembly. I've, I've done some, I've done some of other bike assemblies that have been uh, much more problematic. Let me say that. But right off the bat, it looks pretty decent. I, I like the color. Um, you know, it's not as in bad a shape as I thought the bike might be based on how bad the box looked. <laughs> so that's good. Um, all right, well, thanks. We're gonna be outside soon. All right, so here's just kind of the general overview of the bike. 
I went ahead and did a bunch of measurements and I'll go through the details on it. Some of these details are not on the website and some are, but uh, and some might be a clar further clar clarification what's on there. So here at the back of the bike, this has 700C by 45C CST electric bike rated uh, city tires, which are pretty nice. I, I prefer, I like that. Uh, we have a 500 watt, back here it's a 500 watt Bafang direct drive uh, gearless, or brushless, maybe that's the right word for it, uh, hub motor. And it's, uh, I, I'll, if I can find the peak output and the torque, I will put it, it on the video. It's not available on Ride1Up's website. Uh, you can see back here there's Textro, Aries, these are single uh, piston mechanical disc brakes with 160 millimeter rotors front and rear. They seem to do an adequate job with the bike. Um, it looks to me like these are thicker spokes with reinforced eyelets here on the back. And uh, or maybe they are reinforced eyelets, but you got thicker spokes. It looks like these are 12 gauge on the back and maybe 13 in the front. I don't have a spoke gauge handy with me. Here you can see the rear rack. Uh, this accessory, you can see the issue I had. Um, it was cracked on arrival. Uh, I contacted Ride One Up after I put the uh, everything together, and they gave me an option of getting a rack when they get one back in stock or a refund to be able to do my own thing. I opted for the refund for a portion of the rack fender package, uh, and I'll get that fixed. A couple dimensions here. I got the. Uh, the standover height right here, which is more effective to where you would actually stand over on the bike. It looks like it's pretty close to what a Ride One Up has on their website. So I, measure, I got that at 28.5 inches. And the middle, uh, the minimum saddle height, which is what you see right here, is 34 inches. I, I'm 5 foot 10 with a 32 inch inseam. And when I have the seat up where it works for me for a comfortable leg extension, I can't sit flat-footed at a stop sign or stoplight or anything like that. Uh, going here to the crank, these 170 millimeter cranks, and it's a pretty decent, at least metal, well ago platform pedal. So it's a better upgrade than you know some of the plastic ones. We got a adjustable kickstand here, and of course you get that age-old problem with kickstands. If you try to move the bike, bike backwards right now, it's gonna lock up against there. Um, I've noticed this kickstand wants to thread itself, and for some reason the pressure when the bike is leaning, it pushes it this way, and then the pedal ends up hitting it in its folded position, so I'm having to push the kickstand back out of the way often. Um, I tightened it up. I'm gonna see if there's any, if there's something functionally wrong with the kickstand. It just doesn't seem to be staying in that plate adequately. Here we got the battery, which is a 48 volt, 10.4 amp hour battery that has 499 watt hours. Uh, you have a, a decent little just battery indicator on the top and the key here, of course, which you just turn the key to release the battery, pull to the side. A little bit hard to do with one hand, there you can see. Charging port down here on this side. I almost always charge my batteries off the bike, but if you did, just be take note that if you were charging it on the bike, you need to kind of be aware of your pedal and potentially damaging the cord. I'm gonna go to the other side of the bike here just so we can look at more of the drivetrain and also the USB port on the battery um, is right here. And that notepad is my cheat sheet. <laughs> For my measurements I took earlier. All right, so coming back to the back here, we got, it's a Shimano Air Sierra uh, rear derailleur, uh, seven speed and shifter on the front. Um, so I, I, met, I checked out the cog system, uh, the cassette, and this is a 14 to 28 tooth cassette. So not quite as much of a range um, as you might get on some other bikes sometimes. This is a, you got a 42 tooth front chain wheel and you get this, uh, it's aluminum, and you can hear that, uh, bash guard on here. So that's not really a chain guard, there's nothing on the back side to keep the chain from hopping off. Uh, I typically wear a little uh, elastic band or clip around my pant leg on my right side if I'm wearing pants. Jeez, I always say that. When I'm 
not wearing shorts <laughs> and uh, that way uh, I, I just so I don't really worry too much about chain guards and stuff but I know a lot of people that's important too uh, I forgot to mention these fenders back here are plastic but they I really haven't noticed and I've only rode this about 10 miles so far um, I haven't noticed much noise coming from these that being said probably the most dis difficult part of the whole assembly of the bike was getting this front fender uh, figured out. It kind of has, you can see this attachment where it kind of sits into the old lawyer tabs here in the front fork uh, opening. And so I had to kind of bend this and I got it into place, uh, but it seems to function just fine. I haven't noticed any issues. And one thing you'll note sometimes with these tires when they're tacky is that you'll, you'll suck up a rock along the tread and it'll kind of get caught in between the tread and the fender. So I'll be honest, a lot of times where I live in Northern California, it doesn't rain a lot. I, I often ditch the fenders on a bike because I don't, there aren't that many times it's really a big deal for me. So it's a, there's a non-label generic, uh, I, th I think it's actually hydraulic. I, I'm not, I'll admit I'm not an expert on forks. I tend to ride a lot of just rigid bikes, uh, but it does have preload adjustment here on both sides. I did tighten that up. It seems to be effective. So it does look like it's a hydraulic, not a elastomer or like a spring fork. It seems to do the job just fine. Um, it's, def it's definitely not upgraded or have, it doesn't have any lockout. One thing I want to note here is the, I've noticed keep showing my cheat sheet <laughs> I've noticed that uh, for whatever reason the c-clamp is a little funky sometimes uh, I, I don't know if it's me but I've been having some issues getting it tightened up at times um, this is the seat that comes with it which is a Royal uh, Cellar Royale uh, comfort saddle it has a lot of squish it seems pretty nice um, when I do my range tests and stuff I'll be putting my thud buster seat post in here this is a 27.2 diameter seat post and let's see if you, uh, you can you might be able to see it I don't know if you'll be able to see it also take note I did even though I assembled the bike I've only ridden a little bit I did not grease the seat post or the chain yet even I did have to adjust the rear derailleur it was a little out of adjustment and both of the brakes were a little out of adjustment Especially on an electric bike, I'll typically ride a little while before I kind of try to square that away because the you know let, let everything kind of stretch out and stretch in. All right, here are the handlebar handlebars. I really like these swept back bars. They're really wide. They could be they could be bordering on too wide, but uh, they're not. And they have these kind of uh, leather slip. They appear to be a slip-on grip. There's no secret uh, lock mechanism that I'm seeing, um, but they are really on there well and. Yeah, if I ever needed to change them, I'd probably put a lock style, but I like this look for this bike, um, especially with the city style. So here are the, here are the so I, this is the upgraded display that I purchased. This is the standard display that comes with. So this just has three levels, low to medium high, five bars of battery indicator, up and down mode, walk mode if you hold minus, turns on the headlight if you hit plus. That's the same functionality as the three buttons on the upgraded display, but the upgraded display, oh, it looks like I've actually went 15 miles. Uh, up the upgraded display, you get odometer speed, max speed, average speed. Uh, you just get some, and you get some ability to change the settings. Right now I have this set as a 700C diameter tire for the speed functions. I'm gonna, in my little ride around, I'm gonna change that to the actual, diameter measured which I'd like to do that seems to give you better accuracy than putting the actual diameter uh, which I think is 28 and a half to 29 but I'll change it to see if I get a more accurate speedometer reading and I, either way I'll describe how accurate uh, optimistic or what have you this is reading Another thing I want to mention, so I did measure the bike as pictured the city model with the rack and everything. I measured this at 57.8 pounds. So they, I think they say 53 on the website. I might re-measure it later pulling off the rack and the fenders. I'd be surprised if they weigh four pounds. So I think it might be a little heavier than what they have on their website. The battery itself weighed 7.3 pounds. Let's see. Um, the other thing I want to just go through real quick, like, 
is, oh, and I did, I, I think I mentioned, but this is a one by seven drivetrain. Uh, you got the same uh, Shimano Acera uh, thump trigger shifter here, which works totally fine. It's a, it's a nice brake lever with a, I guess it's more of a four finger lever. And I think this five is the brand, which I haven't heard of. It does have motor inhibitors right here, which is good, especially as you'll see in the ride test, the, the motor doesn't shut off uh, at, and super responsively. So I think having the motor inhibitors kind of can work to your advantage if you're using this as a commuter. It does have an integrated headlight here. I'll turn it on real quick. It seems like it, it's, I don't know what the wattage on the LED is. It's just single. If I can find that wattage, I'll put on the video. Um, the brand of the light is, I saw it on the front of it, Blaze Light. And it go, comes off and on. I, I don't think it has a light sensor, so it's just uh, turn it off and on. I did like the care that they took with this kind of you know cable management system it's pretty nice and clean and their logo logo is clean um you know and then I, oh, I, I didn't i didn't not mention this is the gold model so the gold model gives you the gold emblem the brown kind of texture package and the thumb throttle the black model uh, everything else is black i think the logo is black as well and then you get a twist throttle for, for my thought, when I was looking at the handlebar setup, I thought a, a thumb trigger would be easier to manage um, with the with the swept back nature of these handlebars. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm kind of curious. I'm going to turn, so if you can see now, hopefully you can see, I know this doesn't come through some well, sometimes very well in videos. Uh, five bar indicator here. Uh, right now it's at about four, and I'm going to switch off the power and switch the connection over to the basic display. I'm curious if they match up somewhat on the power. Um, so this is set up for nine levels of assist. That is customizable. There is some, if you search this display online, you'll find that there's some really detailed settings you can get into. Some of it is password protected, and I don't know what the password that uh, Ride One Up set is. But so we're, we got four bars here, and I'm going to switch it over to this display and we'll see what we got. Switch the displays. Power on, it gives you a little flashy flash. Oh, that's cool. So it shows four bars too. So they're pretty consistent. And what I'm gonna do with the ride, I'm gonna do a little ride test here in a second to give you a feel for how it rides. And I'm gonna cycle through each of these and kind of note how I feel, the speed is working. Then I'm gonna stop and switch to this, this display. And I'm curious if the bounds, the low and the high, are pretty similar between these displays. So if you like the clean look, you don't really care about knowing your speed and distance, maybe you just wanna go with this display. And if you really like having distance and speed and some other things, uh, you might wanna go to this display. So hopefully I can help you make that decision. With this, uh, I'm hearing it right now, so it's making me think about it. This uh, less expensive display, or the one that comes with it, uh, makes a high-pitched ringing noise. And maybe it's the, the way the LEDs are powered. Uh, let me get this way. That might be an annoying angle in the sun. Um, so I, I hear it. Some like my girlfriend, I turn on, she didn't hear it. So it didn't bother her. But for me, this would be hard to deal with personally. Um, I, I'm going to get the, here, I'll put the microphone up close. Man, I think might have just got really, cool. maybe it'll come through. Hopefully it does. So I'm a pannier rider, so I really don't like riding with a backpack. So I'm gonna put the, my pannier on here. I did, and you get, I'll show you what the potential issue with this kind of rack setup. It's not huge, but I just wanted to point it out. So what you will notice is the, the way the bracket, let me go on this side, I'm kind of twitching around here. So the, this support bar for that size of pannier, which these I think are 20 liters, uh, it's hard to get the the support for the base of the bag to make connection with this rail. So what I ended up doing is I had to move the rack, the bag further forward than I'd like, and I'm barely getting a little bit of heel strike on the bag. So I'm gonna have to push it back a little more, and I'm probably gonna, you can sort of see where that's hitting now, I'm probably gonna have to shift that so it's barely making contact with that bar um, it does make a nice so that's not flopping around because you can also see that my bag is almost touching the the rear mechanical disc brake so 
and I just kind of wanted to show you kind of how it sets up with the pannier and well I hope the that gives you a good overview on what the specs on this thing are Man, I see a chunk of dirt on the camera hopefully that's not terrible um, some writing on it try to give you a feel for how the motor engages disengages kind of how the feel the, the bike works and I'll track the speed and distance with the GPS to display that on the video as I'm doing that anyway let's go for a ride all right, I had some trouble the other day when I did my little ride test. Uh, there was a ton of wind noise, so hopefully I got it figured out. And I'm going to do the same route with both displays to get a feel for the different displays, which are here. Um, and hopefully, uh, along the way, I'll be able to give you a good feel for how how the motor's working, how it engages, disengages, and what have you. Let's do it. So you notice there's a little bit of whir in the motor. I'm gonna put the camera down. Let's see if you can hear the, go up to the highest assist level with this display, level nine, and you can see what you think. So now this is throttle only. I'm gonna basically get down to the highest gear and see what we got. All right, so now I'm gonna go in the highest gear and I'm gonna basically cycle up through the different assist levels. And I'm hoping then then that's going to give me a way to say, uh, kind of compare the two display power output. So here we go. Level one, two, three, four, five. Five, you get a big bump right there. Six, a little bit more. Six, seven, eight, nine. So hopefully you've been able to hear the motor come off on and on. Um, you notice if you get the cadence going good enough, it engages very quickly, but it doesn't disengage. It takes a couple seconds actually to disengage. So I'm gonna switch displays real quick, and we're gonna do the same route I just did with the other display. Display is switched. There we go. Okay, so this is in low level. To me, this feels like equal to about maybe level four on the other display. Um, after I make this corner appear, we'll switch it to the mid level. And I assume the throttle top speed shouldn't make a difference because it's wired it's not wired through the controller here we go in the mid level yeah, that's a pretty big jump so I mean it's kind of like it goes from maybe three to like six five or six and there's there's high level I think that's pretty much the same as I think that's pretty much the same as assist level nine on the upgraded display. I can't see a significant difference. Um, probably see it it's, or hear it 
it takes about twice as long to disengage as it engages, maybe even a little more. Right's pretty good. Hopefully you've gotten a feel for what this, you know, maybe what this thing's like to ride. So what I would say is that the, between the two displays, the basic display sort of starts at maybe a level four equivalent to the upgraded display and seems to go to the same, like maybe like four to nine in the output range, which I could see it could be a little bit at that level four or five is almost a little too much um, for if you're in in the city in a commuting situation it, it it's pushing pretty hard so man I just burped that was great <laughs> anyway I think I think the I, I personally I think the upgraded display is probably worth it I kind of wish they just I really think they should just make that the basic display. All right, this is the wrap up of the initial review for the ride. One up city gold model. Uh, all in all, it's I'm pretty impressed, especially with the uh, for this price, this price point. Um, you can tell it's a good looking bike. I'll go through some of the things that I I picked up from it. So I did do one full range test. I, I just want to be able to speak a little bit to the range. So I did it in two legs. I'll pop up a little graphic from my GPS watch. Um, I also doubled the GPS with my camera and I noted down the display distance. I attempted to do it throttle only because that was one of the uh, indicators that Ride One Up had on the website. Um, it's, I'll be honest, it's really hard for me to ride that way. So I would say I was probably 75 or 80% throttle only. And part of that was because uh, I, after 12 miles, it dropped to I had one bar of battery remaining. So I started to be a little concerned as I, I rode out, played pool with a buddy, and then rode back home. And so I ended up total getting uh, 22 and a half miles of range. So a fair amount below uh, the claims. I know that's very common. The uh, range estimates are in, I guess, kind of ideal conditions with a ideal rider, which I don't know what that is, but I'm 175 pounds, uh, so I guess I'm not ideal. But <laughs> I like real world numbers and you know, that's, that's what I got. I'll be doing a more detailed video after this with acceleration and braking and multiple range tests. So I like to spend a couple hundred miles with a bike. Uh, then, I start, uh, then I can kind of start to see things on the bike that I think might give you problems or you know, that just is more useful to me or when I was shopping for stuff, which I guess I was because I bought this. Um, so, yeah, I, ho I hope that helps. Um, I, I don't do pros and cons, but I'm just going to go through a list of things that I noted and maybe I, I really liked and things I would do differently. Um, if I was to buy this bike again, I don't know that I'd opt for the Fender and rack package. Um, it adds a hundred dollars. I'm not a huge fan of the front rack attachment location. Uh, you had to take off the wheel, you in effect have to take off the rack and that was really fiddly. And I'm going to show, um, I'm going to have some, a couple DIY videos and I'm going to show a DIY uh, change I think will work with this fender and that kind of might be universal for bikes that don't have a, a braze on is that what it's called on the front fork? Anyway, a place to attach the fender to the front fork tab area. Uh, the attachment for the fender on the back is very standard. Uh, you could get almost any uh, any fender that would work with this size of wheel would work. Um, the other thing that was strange is the way the fen the way the rack attaches is a little different, and you know. I looked on every rack manufacturer I could find to see if they had something that would attach this way, uh, like Tubus and Blackburn and Axiom and uh, I hope that's how you say Tubus, and I couldn't find anything. So this is kind of what you know, and it's the the tubing dimer is a little thicker than it works with some panniers. Luckily, mine uh, it will work. Uh, 
But I'm going to show, here I'm going to pull out this other rack. Uh, this is just a standard rack, you know, not to, and I'm going to, as part of that DIY video on the front fender, I'm going to come up with, I'm going to show a DIY way you can attach a rack like this. This really has a little bit better side support for paneers than this one does. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll work on that. I don't know how quick I'll, quick I'll get that video together. And along those same lines, um, because this doesn't have a rear light integrated, I had to put my own light with this little bracket and it's really difficult. It's gonna be hard to show. I'll pull it over here. Maybe you can get, it's, it's really, I, I really have to cram the light in there and a little bit this could be because of that rack damage I had. I, um, and maybe I'll just end up chopping that off and filing these points down. Uh, so that's just something to be aware of. The rack's not, it's not bad, but it's just not the best in my mind. Uh, other thing I wish is I, uh, right now I got the upgraded display on here. I really wish that the model just came with the upgraded display. The other, I really like having some idea of speed. And I had that, I demonstrated earlier, that whining noise with the base display. So I, I, I would prefer if this was just what was included. It's still pretty clean and minimal. Um, and just the, it just doesn't show, the other one just doesn't show speed. Um, let's see, I'm looking at my cheat sheet. If you wonder, I'm looking down a little bit. Um, so this is a geared hub motor. It's kind of noisy. It's a little, it's a little whiny. I know that there's planetary gears in there, so they tend to be a little noisier. But with that, you know, the geared motor, you get a little less weight. And uh, it's just, just a no. It's a little bit noisy, and it comes through on some of the videos, um, especially on my range video when I had a camera attached to the bike, which I'll show that in the detail video coming down the road. Um, I do like the ride position. It's very upright, more like a city bike. And I'm going to have a, <laughs> there's going to be a really dorky video that plays. It's Halloween. Bear with me. Showing the ride position. Componentry is good on this. I, you know, for the price point, it doesn't directly, honestly, it doesn't directly compete with much because it's cheaper. Uh, some of the Volt bikes, you know, lower end bikes, they're like fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars. I think component wise, this is really competing with like those fifteen you know, bikes are maybe five hundred dollars more than it. And as far as that goes, it's very similar um, components and sometimes better, slightly upgraded. Uh, component package, uh, good cable management, interior routing. I really don't have a lot of negative. I think you're getting a lot of bang for your buck with this particular bike. And you know, and the other thing I will say is Ride One Up has been really responsive to questions I've had. Uh, when I sent the pictures uh, for the damage to the box, they were really responsive. And that's kind of a rarity I'm finding with different companies, electric rideables, bikes, scooters, what have you. So I appreciate that. And I hope that's something they're able to continue with down the road. I hope, I hope this review helped give you like a feel for the bike since it's so new. And yeah, I'm sort of new to reviews too. So I hope the information is pretty good. And like I said, I'll be doing a detail video with multiple range tests as you, since I'm a scientist. You gotta repeat something unless unless my next two range tests are like exactly the same distance, then I I'll probably but I'll probably be spending my intent is to spend a couple hundred miles on the bike uh, over a few weeks, and so I'll give you hopefully give there'll be a follow-up video to this with some more information. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day. Happy Halloween. Though this is gonna be posted after Halloween, so I don't know if I'm saying that, but take it easy. Catch the wave, feel the wave.